Yo, 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 what it do, y'all? It's your boy Charles, and I'm here with another reading from the book that the Lord helped me write entitled Hailing Through the Word of God, Not Psychology. Volume 1 Anxious Attachment slash Codependency. And I just ask that the Father bless me with the words to say to reach those that it needs to reach. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Now, in the last video, I spoke about why minding your business, especially in the kingdom of God, is such an important thing that we need to master. Not just learn, we need to master this, right? Because this will often lead us into situations that God did not call us to jump into. It's very simple. But because some of us, we uh, dealt with rejection, we dealt with of abandonment issues, you know, people coming to our life, leaving abruptly, people ghosting people, getting ghosted, all these things have 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 groomed us into this place where because we may be unsure, I don't know if I'll ever speak to the person again, so I'm gonna mention them twenty times, or well, I ain't gonna be the one rejected this time. I'm gonna reject them first. There's a lot of hurt going on, guys. And because we been through these things, right? We start to overcompensate. God does not want us to overcompensate. There is no way in this Bible where Jesus overcompensated for anything because Jesus knew his purpose, which is something that a lot of us still struggle with. Jesus knew I'm here to, to die on the cross for the salvation of the people. Anything else that tries to come in the way or anything else trying to take me out before that time, I got to get out of there. I got to get out of there. Right? There were plenty of times when the people tried to, the Pharisees, tried to stone Jesus. And it said Jesus escaped or he hid himself. Why? It's not because Jesus couldn't destroy them. Jesus could have destroyed them at any time. He could have called down an army of angels and vaporized them. You feel me? But Jesus didn't do it because it was not his time. And a lot of us can't tell if it's our time, your time, <laughs> your neighbor's time. We can't tell because we don't know who we are in Christ. Right? So because of that, like I said, we start overextending. I, I've done it myself. I, I, I mean, you can call me the extension cord. I was overextending on everything. You know what I'm saying? Right? And even in boxing, right, if you overextend, that count is coming. All right? So I just want to get into the biblical breakdown, right, of minding. I'll just call it how it is. Biblical breakdown. Mind your business. Um, I ain't going to take too much of your time today. I'm just going to read a little bit today. All right? It says, Jesus, understands when he, Jesus understood when he was needed and when he needed to head out, right? Obviously, Jesus understands because Jesus is the living God. He understands when he is needed and when he needs to head out. A lot of us have abandonment issues, rejection issues, and find ourselves trying to fill a void by doing more than we need to. Big no-no in the kingdom of God. You will waste time on things not a part of your journey as I spoke about before Jesus already knew what he was coming to do we don't and in order for us to do that we have to continue to seek his face diligently not once a week we need to be on Jesus every chance we get and he will reveal more right would you tell someone everything that you can't 100% trust all right then, so Jesus, Jesus is going to give us a little bit at a time. Hey, I just need you to write this book. I don't know where that's going to lead, but because obedience is better than sacrifice, let me just do this. Oh, I need you to tell this person this. Jesus, I ain't spoke to that person in 10 years. Be obedient. If you, these, these, tests of, these tests of obedience is building not only our faith in God, but it's letting us know, it's letting Jesus also know that, okay, this is, I have an obedient child right here. Like, okay, with that obedience, he's going to give us more. What the Bible says, because you are faithful with a few, he's going to trust us with more, right? But when you, oh, Jesus, I want to talk to that person, you only, <laughs> you only slowing down your blessings. You're only slowing down your growth, right? Because Jesus is literally trying to show you who you are. 
one of my favorite verses that just came into my spirit lately, I thought Shonda Hallelujah. It's when David was fighting Goliath, and I think I said this in another video, but I really like this verse. Goliath was coming with the beaver's weave, a weaver's beam, I think. It's like a I think it's like a big spear or something like that. And David said, You come with a weaver's beam. I come with the God of hosts. You wanna talk about gangster, bro? Goliath probably was like, man, squid word, what does that even mean? And he found out, right? So when God is sending you to do things, guys, do not be scared, okay? He says, have not I commanded you, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, for the Lord thy God is with you wheresoever thou goest. Right? I'm learning this too. I ain't going to sit here and talk like, hey, man, you got to do it. No, I'm learning it too. I'm learning too. But I will say this. The more you lean into God, the easier it is to lean into the instructions that he gives you. All right? Let me go on to the next part. All right? So it says, it says, Mark chapter 12, verse 13 through 17, KJV. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees of the Herodians to catch him in his word. And when they were come, they said unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of God and truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, Jesus, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Jesus is like, why are you trying to tempt me? Jesus knows everything. He said, Why you tempt me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they bought it, and he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are of Caesar, and to God the things that are of God, and they marveled at him. Render just simply means give to what belongs to Caesar to Caesar, and give what belongs to God to God. Some of us have a hard time doing that. God, I'm trying to help this person give that person to God. But God, you had me uh working on my business. Okay, so go work on your business. <laughs> what are you doing? Trying to help a thousand people. Go work on your business. Right? Render what's to God. Release that person. Hey, God, I've been trying to disciple this person, and they're just not listening. I don't know what to do. Maybe it's me. Give that person over to God. God, I know you told me to work on my business, God. I know you told me to work on this clothing line, God. Okay, so go work on that. It's very simple. But we so, we, we got so much, this, this, these voids, man. We, well, God, if I, if I don't help them, then who's going to? If you are not qualified to help them, step to the side. It's okay, guys. It's okay. I, listen, y'all know I got a story for everything. There was a time where I straight up told God, I said, God, I'm not doing this. This person, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this person. Straight up. And I, I stopped communicating with them. Straight up. And it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't like, because what, what will kick in is the pride. Oh, I can help people. I can save them. I know they're a little rough and tough, but, you know, I'm just going to keep pushing through. Guys, you got to be honest. I told God straight I said, God, I cannot help you. I said, God, I'm not dealing with this person no more. I'm not doing this. Straight up. I told God straight up. I ain't going to like a sports prayer. I said, God, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And God showed me something. He was like, listen, I needed you to go through that because you need to see something about yourself. I said, yeah. I said, you got it, God. I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. All right? So some, we got to be real. I can't say sometimes, all the time, we got to be real. We got to know how to step out the way. Because as soon as we step out the way, that's when God can really start working. Because here you are in the way. The person right here, and God is trying to get through. And you're like, hey, come to me with Bible study. And God is like, Get out the way! <laughs> like, soon as you get out the way, that's when that person can truly start growing. You know what I'm saying? All right, let me uh, keep reading. Did Jesus go back and forth with the Pharisee? No, 
he knew they were hypocrites and told them to render slash give what is to Caesar to Caesar and to God what is God's. When we are trying to prove ourselves, which we should, this is dangerous. Proving yourself, oh, I, Lord, they were sleeping on me. And then, oh man, you know the internet and the culture, they pump this like it's gasoline in your car. Yo, they were sleeping on me. I'm going to turn up. I'm going to show them. When you try to level up just to prove yourself to people, you are moving in vanity. That's vanity because it means nothing. Oh, God, I was fat, and I'm sure I'm getting shape. Cool story, bro. What did that do for the kingdom? It's nothing wrong with getting in shape. Sometimes God gonna have to use somebody to get you out of that comfort zone. Because people been telling you, oh, your mother got high blood pressure, your daddy got high blood pressure, your sister got high blood pressure. Oh, you know, I'll, I'll start working out. There's some girl come and tell you you like her. I don't deal with fat dudes. Now you're going to turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? But God might have to use that person to wake you up. All right? And it be like that. And then, once you... You know, you might have to calm down a bit. Man, that was crazy, man. That girl really hurt my feelings. I like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm swole. I got all these other girls on me now. But the one I want, she don't want me. But guess what? God had to take you from that point and you wasn't listening before. And sometimes God is going to send somebody who's going to make your skin boil you. But guess what? He had to send that person because you was not listening to the, the, the easier messages. You was not listening. Oh, it's okay. Big is beautiful. You get there. Hey, bro, you need to get a job, man. Now, I know that money going to come. God go. Faith without works is dead. I was there. I was one of those people that, oh, God, just going to put it in my lap. God. And this, I ain't going to lie. This time, God just put things in my lap. But I, God, I had to learn, like, God, am I, is that something I'm not doing? God, like, man, you better start working. <laughs> you better start doing stuff. I'm like, yes, Lord. <laughs> right? So I say that to say, guys, I say that to say, guys, sometimes God got to move us in a way that we don't want to be moved. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. Right? And it says, when we are trying to prove ourselves, which we should not be in the first place, as that is vanity, we find ourselves in situations that we could have easily avoided. Right? When when Christ was tempted by Satan, here we go. When Christ was tempted by Satan, right? He's telling him, "Oh, you say you got jump off this uh this this pillar, and your angels are gonna catch you. They should not. What, uh, what's the scripture it said? They you should not. I think like cast like hit your foot against a brick or hit your foot against a stone. But he's saying like, but before you do that, your angels should catch you. And Jesus hit him with scripture, right? Jesus counted with scripture. I forgot the scripture. I." No, I, what, what, what scripture was it? Dang, I forgot what scripture that Jesus used. But Jesus counted with scripture. Why? Because he was not going to do something to prove to Satan he is God. Jesus is already God. What does he need to prove to Satan? What does he need to prove? But what do we find Satan often trying to do? He's trying to prove to God that he's better than him. So, hmm, Charles, what are you trying to say? When we working in vanity, we letting Satan influence us. God, they left me, God. They left me. I'm going to show the world. No, you need to go hell so God can use you properly. Because vengeance is of the Lord. Vengeance is of the Lord. All right? So you out here trying to pull people wrong, you're not doing the work of God, you're doing the work of your wicked, messed up heart. And sometimes, I'm keep it real, sometimes our heart is in that place. It's not the best place to be, but that's just where we are. And we got to grow from that place. We cannot stay there, all right? So I'm going to cut the video right here because the clock is going. So I'm going to come back um, once again. If you enjoyed this reading and if you want to learn more, shoot your boy a DM and I will send you a free PDF copy, guys. Um, God bless. Healing through the Word of God, not psychology. Um, volume 1, Ancient Attachment. It's your boy Charles. God bless. Love y'all. Peace.